is up you guys this is mini superheroes today hey guys welcome into this massive lego disney video this is comparing series one series two and the new 100 years series three disney collectible minifigures from over the years now i thought how am i going to do a comparison because every single set has 18 figures in it so how do you compare that many figures back and forth so i had an idea Every series comes with this pack-in slip that's kind of like a checklist where the figures are numbered 1, 2, all the way through 18. So I took all the checklists and I have figure number 1, number 2, number 3, and so on on the way back. And we're going to compare them in that way. So the first figure, the second figure, the third figure of each series. And we're going to determine which series is the best by seeing how all of that ranks out. So sit back and relax. Let's hop on a magic carpet ride together and check out the Disney collectible minifigure series starting now. So up first, we have the first minifigure from each series. Series 1, Series 2, and Series 3. And that'll kind of set the precedent for how we're going to do this. So for Series 1, we have Stitch. He had a brand new head mold, which is cool. I like the toe printing and it's really funny that he got a tail printing on the back as well with great printing on the back of the head all in all a solid entry into the first cmf series for disney and very cool in series two we got steamboat willie now the only downside about him is that we got a nearly identical figure in a set around the same general time so unfortunately the exclusivity of this figure isn't as exclusive as the other two so he does lose some points there he does come with a giant steering wheel, which is cool, and the toe printing is great, as well as the dull molded legs. You could actually remove his steamboat captain hat up top, too, with a little peg that goes there. And all of that is really cool, but the fact that he's not exclusive loses some points. And Oswald is very cool. Never thought I'd see him in minifigure form, actually, so that's very awesome. He's got dull molded legs here with black on bottom, blue on top, which I like. He's also got a tail printing on the back, but when it comes to ranking the figures, I have to give the number one slot to Stitch. He's just so unique, and it was so cool to get him in a set at all. So I'm going to give first place to Stitch, second place to Oswald, and third place to Steamboat Willie. So as we go through this list, we'll be tallying points. We'll take a toll at halftime and see who's winning. And then we'll get to the bottom and whoever has the lowest score will win. Because of course, that would mean they had the most number one. So let's get on with the list and see who ranks up next. All right, so for the second figure in each series, we have the Toy Story Alien, Black and White Mini, and Pinocchio. So three very different figures from very different eras. But the Toy Story Alien is cool. You know, he has some boot printing on the bottom there. But unfortunately, we did get the Toy Story Alien in lots of Toy Story sets. So his exclusivity is not very high because he came in a lot of other sets. Even if the figure is slightly different, it's not that different. So he loses a lot of points for that. Similar we got a pretty similar mini that came in that Steamboat Willie set we were talking about just before. So, you know, she doesn't have any torso printing. She's got toe printing, which is fine. But overall, she's pretty similar to another figure that exists. Whereas Pinocchio has his little fish in his uh, bucket there. We've got mid-sized posable legs, which are very cool. Got printing on the sides, toe printing, and a very unique new Lego head that has a nose on it, which of course you need for Pinocchio. So, so I think it goes without saying that Pinocchio is the most interesting and most unique one here, ranking him at number one in my book. I'm going to give number two to the Toy Story Alien just because it's really good for army building. Like back in the day, you could have bought a bunch of these and gotten tons of Toy Story Aliens. And unfortunately, Mini is going to come in third place here. The number three figure in each series was Buzz Lightyear, Huey, and Jiminy Cricket. Now, first and foremost, I do have the wrong head on Buzz Lightyear. Unfortunately, I don't have the CMF head anymore, but it's almost identical, so you'll just have to use your imagination between the two. With that being said, everything else on Buzz Lightyear, to my knowledge, is exactly the same, and this was such a cool figure. You can remove the wings in the back to have him as that version. Then, of course, the wings just slide back in there. He's got leg printing some printing under this uh you know chest piece here and the half dome bubble which was really awesome now buzz lightyear did appear in several other sets from toy story uh and toy story 4 so he's not super exclusive but he is very unique for huey 
All three of Donald's nephew use, use exactly the same parts and pieces, except their hat and torso change. Uh, so you can see he's got a little tail piece there, which is really funny. He's got his book right here, which you can open up and there's some printing inside. But other than that, it's tough to say because there's three almost identical figures between them. So there's not much going on there. Jiminy Cricket, on the other hand, does have some printing on his short legs. I guess I should point out that all the nephews have dull molded short legs. That is pretty cool. Jiminy's also got torso printing with back printing, a magenta little umbrella there. He's got a little cloth piece here for a collar, a new hat, and a great face print. So, this is a tough one. Unfortunately, once again, Series 2 is coming in third place just because these figures are so uh, alike between the three, as you'll see very soon. So, Buzz is tough, too, because he came in a lot of sets, right? So, you know, the last couple rounds, we've docked figures for being you know, redundant or whatever, but I still have to give the number one to Buzz this time around for all of the detailing, all of the color. Even though he does appear in other sets, I still think he's the strongest of the three here. So we're going first place, second place, and third place. Our fourth figure in each series is very unique because, of course, we got Aladdin in Series 1, we got Dewey in Series 2, and Fantasia Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey in Series 3. Now, this is insane because Aladdin is an iconic Disney character, the nephews are iconic Disney characters, and Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey is in a league of his own. So, let's take a look at each of them. I do think Aladdin loses some points by not having dull-molded legs. For example, in the same series, Donald did get dull-molded legs, and Mr. Incredible, and so on. So, they could have done it, they just chose not to for some reason. This did introduce some more skin color elements into the Lego catalog, which is very nice, and I do really like his uh, magic lamp here, which is quite cool. Once again, Dewey loses points for the same reason that Huey lost points, and Louie will lose points just because they're all so similar. Like, check it out. Side by side, they're almost identical except for the color change, which I know is accurate to the cartoons and comics, but at the end of the day, we are looking at these uh, in a pretty competitive battle, so... Not a lot to say there. He does have his slingshot, which is cool, but that's it. Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey is insane. Not only does he have dull molded legs, he's got printing on the sides of the legs. He's got his bucket and mop here, as well as a completely unique head with the magician's hat. It's hard not for me to give this the number one spot because it's such an iconic part of Disney. So we're going to go first place, second place, third place. All right, we're to our fifth slot in each series. So here we have the genie, we have Louie, and we have Princess Tiana, a really great figure in its own right, spoiler alert. But let's start with the genie. He does come with a lamp, just like Aladdin, that you can have him kind of float over top, which is quite cool. I really like the gold armbands that he has, and then the head is pretty unique because you can lift up this piece. He's got an earring there and the little hair piece clips in the top. So there's a lot of pieces that came on the genie, which are quite cool. You guys probably already know what I'm going to say about this guy in the center here. Unfortunately, he's too much like his brothers. He does have the flashlight, which is cool. He's got the duck tail, but beyond that, there's not too much going on with this figure to get excited about. Whereas with Tiana, not only do we have dull molded arms, we've got Prince Naveen the frog here. We've got the Tiana's Place menu, a brand new skirt piece and a new color with printing on it, and a reversible head. Whoops. Oh no, everything's falling apart. Well, we do have a reversible head, which is quite cool. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. These figures are all pretty good. Of course, the guy in the middle is the lamest, so he's in third place, but I'm giving first place to Princess Tiana and second place to the genie. All right, we've got two villains and a greedy duck in the middle. So we've got Maleficent, uh, Scrooge, and then, of course, we've got Fasilier. Now, I've been told I keep getting his name wrong. I'm very sorry. I've not seen the princess and the frog in a long time, so my apologies. Anyways, Maleficent is really awesome. She's got that skirt piece here. I think if she had come out in a more modern series, she'd probably have the skirt piece like Tiana has, but she doesn't have that, so it does look good for what we got. She does have a really uniquely colored head. I like that. The hands are a very unique color, too. Her helmet piece is kind of squishy, and all of the printing on the cape is awesome. Black on the outside, purple on the inside, definitely really great. Scrooge McDuck comes with a little 10 cent piece. He does have dull molded legs and the duck tail, which is really, really nice, and I like that figure a lot. I think it translated to Lego pretty well. 
Then for Dr. Fasselier, who, once again, I probably got his name pronunciation wrong, he is quite cool. He's got toe printing, he's got his little card and magic staff here, and overall it's a nice figure, but I do think it's the weakest of the three. So this time around, we're going first place, second place, third place. It's kind of interesting that at our number seven slot, we got two Alice in Wonderland characters. Of course, we have Alice, the Queen of Hearts from Series 3, and Chip from Series 2. Now, these all look great. I mean, Alice has printing on her skirt up front here, which looks great. She's got printing on the legs, which is unique to the figure. I really like what they did for the hair. That looks great. She only has one side to her head, though. Kind of a rarity with Lego and, uh... Yeah, I like that she's got a little cookie here, the Drink Me bottle, and overall it looks really good. Chip is really fun too. He's got his tail printed on the back. He comes with a little acorn. He's got the mid-sized posable legs, which is great, and I just love Chip and Dale, so he's a really, really great inclusion. And the Queen of Hearts has this giant skirt piece here, which definitely is her distinguishing factor on this figure. She's got the little cloth piece here, and I think it's a nice figure all around, but not one I'm super excited about. You can't flip the head around and she's got like an angry face too that's worth pointing out. But overall, I do think it's the weakest figure here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. This is like a pink fest on this uh, lineup here. For our eighth figure in each lot, we have the Cheshire Cat from Series 1, we've got Dale from Series 2, and we of course have Sleeping Beauty Aurora from uh, Series 3. So the Cheshire Cat, really, really cool. I love the pink tail that has multiple colors in it. All the stripes on the legs and arms and torso are great, and the uniquely molded head is awesome. But I have to say, he has always creeped me out ever since I was a little kid. He just has given me the EBGBs, and even in Lego form, he kind of does that too. For Dale here, he looks really great. I love the buck teeth. He does have mid-sized legs, just like Chip. He's got a little uh, bag here. Who knows what that could be full of? But he does have his tail printed on the back and a very unique head, which I like a lot. Finally, Sleeping Beauty has her owl. She also has arm printing and skirt printing, which is great. And I love that the hair is reversible for a smile on one side and sleeping eyes on the back. All three of these I think are really strong, but I'm gonna go one, two, three, because man, he still creeps me out all these years later. For our ninth figure in all the series, we have some serious girl power going on. We've got Daisy Duck, Elsa, and Mulan. So that is really, really great. And all of these are pretty cool. Of course, this was our first ever Daisy Duck. She's got dual molded arms, dual molded legs, the duck tail, and a uniquely printed head for this figure. And of course, a big bow up top. A very nice figure, classic Disney representation. You'll love to see it. Then of course, we've got Elsa. Check out her like kind of shimmery cape with the snowflakes on the inside. Love that. The hair piece is kind of like a friend's hair piece because if you lift it up, you can see it's squishy. On the back, she's got a winking face, which I really, really like. Of course, she also has arm printing and I love the torso and uh, skirt piece here with all the printing on there and the giant snowflake is a very nice touch. For Mulan, we have dull molded legs with great printing on the torso as well as the back if we lift the hair up. She also has friends like hair that's kind of squishy, which you can flip around for an angry fighting face on one side then a more excited smile on the other. She has a sword and a little cricky build on the side. So this is a very, very tough one to rank. I do have to give it to Elsa though, because I love seeing the Frozen sisters in minifigure form instead of minifigure doll. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. And that officially brings us to halftime where you can see that the scores are 16 points for series one, 16 points for series three, and a tie and 22 points to series two. Remember, whoever has the lowest score at the end will technically be the best because that means they had the highest ranked figures as far as, you know, having as many number ones as possible. But even with a six point difference, anything can happen here and we've got nine more figures to go. So stay tuned to see how they rank up. Okay, so we're at our 10th figure of each series. We have classic Donald Duck, Anna from Frozen, and Ernesto from Coco. All three really great figures. Of course, Donald's got those dull molded legs with the duck tail. I love the printing on the arms. Such a nice little attention to detail. The very uniquely molded head and of course the removable hat make for a great figure, but we've gotten a few Donalds since then in other sets, so he's not super unique like the other two are. 
Anna has actually only ever appeared in mini doll form other than this minifigure series, so she's a very welcome inclusion here. You can see she's got a little bit of back printing, nothing too crazy. You've got great torso printing, which unfortunately is covered up a little bit by this cloth piece, but there's printing on the skirt as well. She's got her lantern. And she's got like a rubbery hairpiece here. Kind of looks like the Wendy's girl, doesn't it? Anyways, you can see that she's got a freckly smile on one side and then a wink on the other side of the head, which looks really, really good. Unfortunately, the hair on mine kind of gets stuck to the head a lot, so it's a little hard to switch around. Then for Ernesto, we have a great figure here with printing all over. You've got printed arms, printed legs, printing on the front, printing on the toes, a unique printed guitar, a great torso and a reversible head, which I think looks awesome all around. So it's hard not to give Ernesto the first place here just because he's got so much unique printing, but I do love Anna in minifigure form. So I am going to give first place to Anna, second place to Ernesto, and third place to Donald. Our 11th figure in each series is Minnie Mouse, Jafar, and Miguel from Coco with Dante. So Minnie Mouse is really nice with the dual molded arms. You've got printing on the legs as well as dual molding. Love the polka dot dress, a great figure all around. Jafar is a little lackluster. You know, he doesn't have any printing on the skirt piece. I will give him points because he has a reversible head, which I really like. And the cape is pretty cool because you've got red on the inside and black on the outside. This was really good for making Thor customs around the time of Infinity War, and I'll never forget about that. But Miguel from Coco is insanely awesome. He's got a guitar, but we're going to remove it so you can see all of the torso printing and all that on this figure, because he's got mid-sized legs, as you can see, which are the shorter posable legs. He's got a double-sided head here with an open mouth smile and then a closed mouth smile, but you can remove that and put on an alternative head, which is this head here which I really love, and there's a reversible head to this side too. So you get two different heads, both reversible, two hair pieces technically, because you've got the regular hair and the hood, and you get Dante with the guitar. It's a slam dunk figure. He earns the number one spot. I'm giving number two to Minnie, and I'm giving number three to Jafar, unfortunately. All right, I feel bad for Pocahontas and Jasmine because they've got to go up against the big boss, Mickey. So, of course, we've got classic Mickey Mouse here with dual-molded legs, toe printing, all that good stuff, but we have gotten a lot of Mickeys and a lot of Mickeys that are pretty dang close to this figure. As for Jasmine, I like that she's got her little dove here. You've also got arm printing. I like the squishy hair, kind of reminds me of Friends, but no uh, reversible head printing, you know, gotta point it out. And uh, the legs have a little bit of printing, more like shading and accenting than like big time detail printing. But Mulan is awesome. She's got arm printing on one side, all of these leaves straight out of the movie, the flowing hair, dull molded legs, the compass, and if that's not enough, a reversible head. So it's definitely a cool figure. Mulan definitely gets the first place. Second place goes to Jasmine and Mickey comes in third. All right, good thing these guys aren't fighting because Mr. Incredible would absolutely take down these two, I think. But let me know in the comments if you agree. Series 1 gave us Mr. Incredible, Series 2 gave us Hades, and Series 3 gave us Corella DeVille. Now, Mr. Incredible had dull molded arms and dull molded legs with great printing all around. He also came with the uh, Doing Our Part little poster here, and I really like the hairpiece they introduced on him with the receding hairline, but he only has one printed side to the head. The only place where where Mr. Incredible loses points is the fact that we legitimately got an Incredibles 2 theme just a few years after this, so he's not entirely exclusive because they made an almost identical figure a couple years later. So, as we know, that does kind of lose points, although Mini did rank a little higher, so, you know, you never know how these things will pan out in the end. Here we have Hades, a really unique figure with the blue flames kind of using the Ghost Rider style head. Dull molded arms, red flames, and the tentacle piece here at the bottom look really, really nice. I don't know if this piece was ever used on another figure or not. It looks really good here, though. And for Corella DeVille, we've got a Dalmatian pup. Our little purse here printed on a one-by-one one with a sloped edge. We also have the red shoes printing on the bottom with dull molded legs, a cloth cape, and a really, really great hair piece that can be reversed around to show a more villainous side to the head. So... That's pretty cool, a great looking figure, and I do think I have to give the number one slot to Corella DeVille. She just looks so good. Then I'm going to give the number two spot to Hades and number three to Mr. Incredible, just by default. 
All right, this time around, we've got a lot of orangish vibes going on with our 14th figure in each series. Syndrome came in Series 1, Hercules in Series 2, and Robin Hood in Series 3. Now, Syndrome had a nice black cape, but if we lift that up, you can see that on the back he had no printing, but he did have dull molded arms and legs, which were really nice, and I really like the Omnidroid blueprint he came with. Definitely a cool figure with lots of printing, and since he didn't come in the Incredibles line of sets, I think it is pretty cool to get him here, because otherwise we probably never would have gotten him anywhere. For Hercules, he's got a very unique skin tone, which I think works for the figure. Dull molded legs, arm printing, the whole gambit, and a reversible head with a smirk on one side and then a more angry battle face on the other. For Robin Hood, we've got a very uniquely molded head and uh, arm printing, leg printing, dull molded legs. You're probably getting tired of me saying it at this point. So let's rank up the figures. Honestly, guys, you may not agree with me, but I gotta go number one to Syndrome. It's just so unique, and as a superheroes fan, I mean, heck, you see it twice on screen here, I gotta give it to him. Robin Hood's getting number two, and Hercules is getting number three this time around. Okay, we're up to the 15th figure, which gives us Peter Pan, it gives us Sally, and it gives us King John from Robin Hood. Definitely an interesting inclusion, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Peter Pan was really cool back in the day. You got dull molded arms, dull molded legs, all kinds of printing. He looked awesome, but in 2023, we also got a Disney train, which re-released him. Granted, with less printing and less detail, but it is another opportunity to get him, which made his exclusivity to this set a little bit less special. Sally, on the other hand, has her black flowers here, dull molded legs with printing on the sides. Look at the legs being different colors, too. We can lift that hair up to see a reversible head with a closed mouth smile on one side and an open mouth smile on the other. Definitely a really nice figure. And King John is honestly kind of a really random inclusion to me. I've been interested to see that with all the reviews and stuff, you guys have really dug getting him. But to me, I would have rather seen another character in this slot. So unfortunately, he does rank at number three here. Sally comes in at number one and Peter Pan comes in at number two. Okay, now this is a very difficult lineup because you've got Captain Hook here, who just looks awesome, Jack Skellington, an all-time classic character, and you've got Stitch 626 with the double arms. Man, this is going to be a hard one to determine. Captain Hook has his really cool little gold sword here. You've got arm printing with a little bit of white fluff on both sides, dull molded legs with printing all over them, and this giant hat piece, which looks awesome. Only one side to the head, worth pointing out though. Jack Skellington also only has one side to the head, but he has arm printing on both sides, leg printing on both sides, this very cool little waist cape, his bow tie piece, and he comes with a present here, which you can open up, and there's all kinds of snowflakes inside. So that's pretty unique in its own right. Then Stitch has his two yellow guns, these awesome arms that have two arms in the same socket. You've got leg printing and you've got the return of the Stitch head mold, which uh, actually has some different printing on it to distinguish it from the original. So this is tough because this is one of my favorite figures from the third series, but I do think Jack Skellington's a great figure and honestly, so is Captain Hook. But at the end of the day, I gotta go one, two, three. I'm curious if you guys agree with that one or not. All right, here we go, guys. We've got Series 1 with Ursula, Series 2 with Edna Mode, and Series 3 with Baymax. Definitely a very interesting lineup. Ursula has this giant squid body part there that you can see comes up over the torso piece, which is really, really unique in its own right. Only one side of the head is printed, but the purple shades are very, very interesting, as is the hair. Edna Mode, unfortunately, is a little redundant because we do get her as an Incredibles polybag to promote the Incredibles video game, so she's not particularly rare or anything, and she's not even exclusive, but uh, to be fair, the polybag was a different figure entirely, but the figure, like the character, appeared elsewhere is what I'm trying to say. You've got your Edna Mode bag here with the little coffee cup, and Baymax is awesome with his giant arms here and his little charging port. The one thing I will say is this is mini superheroes today, so Baymax is going to come out at number one for me with Ursula at two and Edna Mode at three. 
And finally, our 18th figure in each wave. Series 1 gave us The Little Mermaid, Series 2 gave us Frozone from The Incredibles, and Series 3 gave us The Evil Queen. All of these are really good figures. The Little Mermaid had this very unique mermaid tailpiece. I love the hair too. Only one side to the head, but I wanted to lift up the hair so you could see the back printing. And she had this cool little shell here with a diamond inside, and overall it's a classic Disney figure uh, in minifig form. For Frozone, you can see that he's got this disc that you can set him on. He's got the little power blast there. Dual molded arms, dual molded legs, and a great head print too, which looks awesome. And the Evil Queen had red on the inside, black on the outside of the cape here. You've got the collar piece. You've got the little mirror that looks great and awesome printing on the torso and legs. So it is a really nice figure. However, I do have to point out that Ariel is a classic Disney figure. So I'm going one two, three to round us out. With that being said, let's take a look at how things ranked up in the end. So remember at halftime, Series 1 and Series 2 were deadlocked at 16 points each. As we move down the list, you can see that things kind of got evened out, but Series 3 had a lot of ones in the end here, and it ended up winning with only 31 points. Series 2 had 41 points in last place, and Series 1 had 36 points. This was a very, very close rack, uh, this was a very, very close match, but in the end, Series 3 came out on top, and I honestly thought Series 1 was going to win, but that's what we got. All right, guys, well, let me know which series you personally like the best. Needless to say, we have a lot of great figures here. I don't know that there was ever a bad series. It's just some figures were better than others, but all of them are pretty good in their own right. So let me know what you thought of this in the comments down below. Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Well, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and maybe check out one of my other videos listed here.